Hey guys, what's up? It's Izzy. If you're new to my channel, thank you for clicking this video. I am a freshman at UC Berkeley intending on studying economics or business administration. This video is just going to be like a bunch of random advice that kind of just pops into my head at random times uh, that I think that you guys should know. But here are just some tidbits that I thought I would pass on to you guys um, as you prepare for your freshman year. My first piece of advice for trying to find a roommate if you get to choose who your college roommate is gonna be is actually FaceTime them before committing because people are very different over Instagram DMs, Facebook Messenger, texting than they are in real life. So when I was choosing my roommate, um, we FaceTimed and then we liked each other over the FaceTime call and then we committed. Over FaceTime, you just get a better sense of their personality and kind of like who they are. So I think that is very helpful. Do not commit with a roommate before you FaceTime and actually talk Talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. The second piece of advice, don't comment in them unless you are committing to that school because it's really annoying for everybody else if you post and you're like Cal Berkeley or like Harvard or whatever is like oh, my top two and I'm still deciding. Like people aren't gonna reach out to you if you're still deciding because they don't wanna commit to a roommate. Like you don't really know where you're going yet. So don't post in those until you actually know. You're not gonna get that many messages asking to be roommates or like hitting you up if you aren't certain that you're gonna go to that school. Okay, another piece of advice for this like Facebook finding roommate Thing. Don't freak out if nobody reaches out to you or if no one comments on your post or if you don't get that many likes on your Facebook post in that group. <laughs> I like felt sad because when I posted mine, I thought I made my post so fun. Literally everybody else in the group was getting over 80 likes and I literally got like 11 or 13. I was so sad and I had like one person comment on my post and nobody really followed me on Instagram after I put my Instagram handle. First of all, like it doesn't matter that nobody's liking your post, but if you really want to find a roommate through Facebook, you just have to know that you have to be the one to reach out to others over Instagram. DM them, be like, hey, I told, I saw your like Facebook post. We both have the same music taste, like that's super fun. Just be the outgoing one and message them first. I never had a single person DM me on Instagram, but I DM'd like 40 people. And I found my roommate that way because I reached out to her. Don't like think anything is wrong with you if nobody is liking your post on Instagram. And then also another one for this category is, I'm just like, I'm literally thinking about these on the spot and I'm so proud of myself right now don't like assume that you're never gonna see that person or like if somebody DMs you and they want to start a conversation with you don't leave them on red and be like oh I'm never gonna see them because I met so many people in real life from that Facebook group after like a couple weeks at school just know that you're gonna meet these people on campus you're gonna have classes with them especially if you go to small school so don't burn bridges over this Facebook group just be nice to everybody last piece of advice for this whole Facebook group thing, uh, choosing a roommate. Do not lie on your Facebook post. It's an obvious thing, but it's easy to lie when you think that you'll be a good roommate with somebody. In my personal experience, I love my roommate this year, but at the beginning she asked if I was, <laughs> if you're watching this roommate, I'm so sorry. She asked if I was clean and I'm not really that clean. I'm not a slob, but I do like leave a mess on my bed or like leave like crap on my floor. But she was like, oh, do you think you're pretty clean? And I really wanted to be her roommate. So I was like, yes, like I'm so clean. I never made my bed in high school and like in college, I made my bed every single day because I knew that she wanted it to like a clean roommate. So I really made an effort to be clean. But personally, that just wasn't like who I, who I was. Don't lie on your Facebook, like Facebook post. Like I know you really want to be best friends with your roommate. And if you can be, that's amazing. But also realize that you're living with this person. So make sure that you're like 100% truthful on everything you post. Okay, so now more for like the materialistic items of preparing for your freshman year. My first piece of advice would be don't buy one of those pre-made packages of all of the bedding. I don't remember the name of the company that I did it through, but I bought this giant box that had bedding, towels, um, laundry bag, pillows, blankets. I had everything in it and it was really cheap. It was like $130, maybe $200. But the downfall of this company, it was all really, really cheap material. And if you're going to live 
in dorms more than one year or you're planning on living in a sorority or house or something you need extra long sheets at least my school did so you're gonna want them for four years you're gonna want your bedding for four years the first thing wrong with it was that it was all like none of it was washed and it all smelled like dank chemicals when i got it and then also the the material of everything was really crap i bought like a comforter and within like the first two months it started like um pilling i guess on it and it just got all ratty go to bed bath and beyond go to target and just hand select all of your things because they're going to be of nicer quality i just have to buy everything again next year and i'm just going to go to bed bath and beyond or target to do it all again but if you can prevent that just buy nice quality things your freshman year. So now how do you get all your crap to your dorm? A lot of my friends that were in state that went to CU Boulder because I was living in Colorado at the time, just drove all their stuff. But so I was flying into Berkeley and I was like, what do I do with my stuff? I had a friend who lived 35, 40 minutes from Berkeley. I had this big pre-made box full of crap sent to her house. And then I just drove in a rental car with my mom when I got to campus, picked it up, drove back, and then moved into my dorm. So if you have a friend or a relative that lives within the area, reach out to them and ask if you can have all your stuff shipped there. If that's not an option for you, they have, you can ship stuff to your dorm. And they tell you that you can't, but you can. They have this big mail room and people were like shipping crap there all the time. And people were shipping bedding and stuff and just try to ship stuff directly there. If that doesn't work, you can also just arrive onto your campus a couple days before or like a night before. Buy stuff at Target or a Bed Bath & Beyond. Have all of the stuff shipped to that in-store location, drive to that store and then pick it up instead of like having to go to Bed Bath & Beyond or Target the day of and try to buy bedding because everything is gonna sell out because everyone's trying to do that at the same time. Those are like my three different ways, I guess, that you can get all of your crap out to your college dorm room. My school also, for UC Berkeley kids that are watching this, they don't allow candles or lights and they do do room checks. Like you don't think they do, but they do. And they come in your rooms at random times sometimes. And if you get lights, you can get fined or you have this little piece of paper that you have to sign promising that you're not gonna put your lights back up. Okay, that's, that's that. All right, moving on. This is gonna be debunking the social myths of freshman year. With RAs, I know there's like a lot of different videos out here, but I love my RA, he was a nice guy. You kind of feel out your, I'm not like endorsing anything bad, but the first couple of weeks feel out your RA, definitely get to know your RA. I got to know my RA, we went on a hike together, like we would get meals together. That makes the relationship better. You kind of respect each other both like mutually better if you're friends. Some of the other RAs on different floors in my dorm building were very strict and they would even come up to other floors with less less strict RAs and enforce rules even though they're not even your RA. That can happen also. Okay, so what happens if you get written up by an RA? That's like, that's the big T that everybody wants to know. So I never got written up, but I had a lot of people on my floor get written up like multiple times I think but so basically they take a picture of your student ID at least at Cal they did there's just there, there's different like punishments for like every situation because there's a court of kids that decide what your like what you have to do like what your consequence is I had a friend who was on one of these boards that like decides the consequences and she's like well like I do this stuff too so it's not like I'm gonna kick them out but you have a couple a couple warnings but just be respectful um and you'll be fine. So that's what happens if you do get written up. The myth about drugs. There was one comment in my last video, so I'm gonna address it here. And they asked like, how bad is the drug scene in college? Does it smell like weed all the time? People popping, you know, pills. I'm gonna be honest, obviously. The people on my floor smoke weed, I think every single day. People, do smoke weed in their rooms, know that that's gonna be a thing. For me, that was a big shocker because I never smoked weed, like, and I didn't even, I didn't like the smell of it. Chances are it's college, people are gonna be doing drugs. It's the reality of it. I don't, I don't do drugs personally, but I'm okay with people doing it because it's their choice. And like, I'm not gonna take that from them and I'm not gonna be parenting them. So if you're really anti-drugs, I was pretty anti-drugs and like alcohol and everything. Like I just thought I got so uncomfortable in high school, but in college you have to be more accepting of it. Just being able to understand people, you don't have to be friends with them, you don't have to hang out with them, but just know that this is gonna be a thing that's prevalent. Okay, the next like social thing, freshman 15. 
I didn't gain 15 pounds, but I think I gained like 10 or nine or something like that around that area. It's not guaranteed though. So if you go to the gym and if you eat okay, you're gonna be fine. Nine pounds for me wasn't the end of the world. Like I'm pretty like secure in my body image. So I didn't care that much. I definitely was still going to the gym, but compared to my weight in the summer, I definitely had gained weight. Freshman 15 is a thing. Try to go to your gym if you can. Try to eat healthy if you can but also know that it's normal. It's don't hit, like beat yourself up for gaining weight your freshman year. You're not alone and it's totally fine. Let's talk about Greek life next. So Greek life is very different at my school than it is in like the South or different schools around the nation. Obviously it's different everywhere. Um, but so I did end up brushing. Greek life at Cal I think is like 13%. It's not a very big percentage. So that's why I wanted to be involved. Keep an open mind to Greek life. I am not a tall, blonde, skinny person. Not saying that all tall, blonde, skinny people are like sorority girls, but I just didn't feel like I fit the stereotype, but being at Cal and being in the house that I'm in, I feel very accepting. My house is very diverse, um, not in just ethnicity, body type, but like ideas, majors, just everything. Even if you're not in Greek life, frat parties are a thing, unless you go to like a Catholic school. Greek life, I feel like for a lot of my friends that go to other universities also, is kind of like the thing to do on the weekends. If you're not a partier, honestly, that's like totally fine. You, There's so many things to do on the weekends besides party. Um, but there are parties, I think every single day of the week, honestly, if you wanted to find one. Just remember that if regardless if you rush or not, people in Greek life are not the enemy. <laughs> I just think that the media portrays it very nastily and like makes it like kind of culty and like portrays them all as being like one type of person. That's really not the case, at least in my school and in my sorority. If you want to rush, I think I would encourage it. It's definitely a tiring week but I think it's worth it. And yeah, that's my two cents on Greek life. Bring, if you want to go to frat parties, um, bring a pair of shoes to college that aren't, oh my God, wait, I have them right here. These are my frat shoes. They're just like Vans that are black. Um, they're pretty nasty. Um, but bring a pair of shoes that you don't care about. Don't wear heels. So yeah, bring a pair of frat shoes. Yeah, that's my advice. I'm just gonna keep it at that for Greek life. So that's, I guess like the social, Nesses of being a freshman in college. Okay, and then lastly, I want to address a more serious topic, I guess, relating to being a freshman in college and navigating your way. If you're going into a school that had like a 30% acceptance rate or below, you're obviously very smart and you worked very hard in high school and you tried hard on your exams and you were smart. For me in high school, being smart was a personality trait. I think going to university, that goes away and you need to be okay with that. Nobody calls me smart anymore. Nobody validates my academic abilities. Nobody's telling me that I'm doing good in my class, but just know that you're not gonna be smart anymore compared to the entire student body. You're just gonna be there to learn. In high school, I was like, People would always talk about their class rank, their SAT scores, just like numerical values to measure each other. And in college, that's not really how it is. You just, you do you academically. So that's something that I want you guys to know. The second like academic thing that I want you guys to be aware of is being able to know who you are and where you stand academically. And being able to know yourself is very important. My first semester, I had a big giant review session for my business exam. They were flipping through the slides really quickly and I just, I my stomach like bunching up and I like, I was like, I need to cry. Like, and I was getting so worked up because I, the academic environment for me was just not, I was starting to compare myself to everybody on the test. I was like, if these kids are typing faster than me, that means they're gonna get a better grade on this test. And like, I was so over, I was so overthinking everything. I just left, like in the middle of the review session, I stood up, I had to like awkwardly shimmy past everyone. And I just left that review session. Cause I was like, this is not doing anything for my mental health right now. And it's not doing anything to make me know this material better. I encourage you guys to become aware of yourself and what you're feeling at all times. Because I think being able to know what situations make you stressful and being able to leave those and then what environments you thrive in and being able to um, reach out to those outlets is a very important thing. Um, do not let other people get to your head. Don't let snake culture get to your head. Even if you have a friend 
who you think is a really good friend of yours but keeps like talking about how well they did on a test or how many extracurriculars they're doing or about their new internship like you have to do you and it's a very hard thing and I'm still learning it myself but I'm on this journey to accept myself and where I am and everything that I'm doing definitely being proud of my friends and other people who have amazing internships and who are getting good grades like definitely be proud and supportive of them but just know that everyone's on their own path and you can't be competing with everybody all the time or you're just never going to be happy with yourself and who you are as a college student wow that really that turned really emo I'm sorry but I think that was some advice that you guys needed to hear so with that being said, I think that is all of my advice to give you guys, at least for today. Thank you for staying tuned for this whole video, and I hope you guys have a great week.